First one up is this one here. Small rattly package. Um, Five dollars and... 96 cents and I just noticed what they actually are Awesome, so these are for a upcoming PCB I've decided to build There's a hundred in here and these are 5630 sized high CRI LEDs so there's a hundred of them here. They're a little bit expensive because that's just what it is. Um, I believe these are the same as you get on high CRI LED strips. So there's some up here sort of lighting up my work area. Um, and they say they're three volts, 150 milliamps, but I feel like that's, that's gotta be too much. Like I, I don't, I don't think that it's going to be that much let's let's see what happens here I've got my uh, my wires here positives over on this side um, I'm gonna put this uh, V set 3 volts and I'm going to current limit to 150 milliamps oops that's gonna be 15 amps okay and let's see what this gives, but I feel like that's going to be too much. Oh. Trying to get it to light. There we go. Yeah, at 3 volts, it's only putting out 100 milliamps. But my plan is to build uh, panels out of these things and run them lower. Uh, I'm probably going to put a 50 ohm resistor in series. And hopefully that's going to be, you know, enough to limit the current on these. Let me see if I can put a 50 ohm resistor and we'll see how bright they're going to be. Got my decade resistor box here set to 50 ohm. So that's uh, in the times 10 fifth slot. And I'm going to try this and see what we get. Now I've bumped up the voltage to 4 volts because my plan is to run three of these in series. Uh, that's what they do on those little uh, CRI strips, but they only res uh, limit them to, I think it's 39 ohms. So I'm going a little bit more resistive than that. See, that's pretty good. Right there, that is 100 milliamps. No, sorry, 10 milliamps, which makes sense. And I think they're quite bright enough. So, yeah gonna put these in my stock of parts and gonna make a PCB very likely gonna be sponsored which is great uh, and then you guys will be able to use my designs for free so yeah pretty excited about putting this together we'll see how bright they become and we can always adjust the resistor values to adjust for the brightness and at worst you can also adjust the uh, voltage value up in order to get a little bit more brightness out of them. On to the next one. Next one up is this one here. Uh, this one is January 14th to February 11th, $13.30. Now, that sounds a little bit expensive. And wait till you see what's inside. I basically stocked up. Oh yeah, here it goes. So these are a whole bunch of 0805 resistors and I think I'm gonna have to zoom you in a little bit and I'll show you which values I took and for what reason but basically I'm soldering on more PCBs now and I like to do things with uh, repetition sort of like you know those LED panels I was talking about and so I want a good stock of common values uh, values I can you know pretty much deal with for anything and since shipping is kind of expensive, you buy these reels for, you know, like 60 cents for a hundred or something like that. And then you get them all in one shipment. So it's much cheaper. Uh, some of the more common values, I think when I start running low on them, I'll start ordering like a thousand at a time, get another uh, price break. But for now, let me show you what values I got. So here are my choices. I seem to have ordered one by accident, but um, 
Anyways, let me know if you think I should order um, more of different kinds, but here's my thoughts. So I've got one ohm, 4.7 ohms, so sort of, you know, so four, one, five, and then 10 ohms, and then 47 ohms, so kind of, you know, halfway in between. Then this one I think was an accident, 56 ohms. I, thought, I think that was supposed to be either 47 or 56, but I got both. Oh well. Um, 100 ohms, 150 ohms, and then 220 ohms, which I like for LEDs. So that's why I have 220 specifically. 470 ohms, also like those for LEDs, um, red LEDs, I think. Then 1K. 4.7 K, 10 K, 47 K, 100 K, 470 K, 1 meg, 4.7 meg, and 10 meg. So those are my choices. I think there were 18 of those. So 1,800 resistors for whatever that was, 13 bucks or something which wouldn't be so bad, but you know, the shipping kind of kills. Now, um, Mouser and DigiKey have resistors for roughly the same price. It's just that if you don't buy a hundred dollars worth of stuff, it becomes more expensive because of the shipping. So basically if I want resistors, I can either buy them for about the same price shipped or a little more uh, plus shipping, you know, to get them locally. Um, I went with this because time is not of the essence in this case. And I just figured, you know, I'm ordering already, so I might as well. And I used some of my favorite YouTubers reference uh, uh, links or whatever most of the time. But I hear that uh, the honey add-on removes that. So I need to remove honey on, off my browser, I guess, when I'm trying to support my colleagues on YouTube. But anyways, that's my selection. Let me know which ones you would add if you have some favorite ones and maybe I'll add them to the list for the next time. But some of these clearly I'm going to need to order more because I think in my last project I used a whole bunch of 100 ohms. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to wear down. But at some point you need to draw the line. On to the next one. Next one up, a little bit more of a specialized tool, but um, if you want to get it on eBay, you'll save a lot of money. Uh, this is January 17th to February 11th, $2.55. So this is an automotive tool, uh, but those of you who use uh, batteries in your workshops this is good for you too. So what this is, is this is a battery post cleaner. There we go. That comes apart like that. So you got um, this end here to brush the terminals on an automotive battery and this one here to brush the um, to brush the, the post off. Now be careful because the posts on automotive batteries are made out of lead or some sort of lead alloy. Definitely lead of some sort. Uh, and so you do need to keep them clean to get a good connection, but at the same time, wash your hands after brushing them. Now let me get a battery. I'll show you what it does. This here is the battery out of my wife's fit. And as you can see, there's some corrosion there. Now it's not too bad in this case, but they can get very bad. So basically what you do is you take your brush here and you put it on top of the terminal like this and you give it a twist and there you go that is a much cleaner connection than what it was before and just be careful because now you put you know sort of lead dust kind of everywhere so what you would do then is you would um, clean the terminal with the brush side so you clean the actual connector you know go in the brush side and then you would install it and then you put a little bit of lubricant just to protect the post here and the connector from the oxygen. So you can see it's nice and shiny. And now whatever you put on here will have a good connection. 
It is uh, extremely important, especially in cold climates, to keep your battery in good shape because it's much harder to start a car in the cold. And this thing for like three bucks, as you saw, Canadian, is well worth putting in your toolbox. Buy this thing before you need it because if you get to a point where your battery terminals are done for, you know, you'll have to hike to the store and you'll probably pay something like 15 bucks for something like this locally. So rather pay three bucks, show it off in instead of, you know, when it, waiting till I need it and buy it then. On to the next one. Next ones up come via Amazon. This is a company, uh, Quintis, Q-U-N-T-I-S. They uh, reached out and um, wanted to see if I want to take a look at some stuff. Um, I asked for some lights of their products. I actually wanted um, a weather station, but they didn't have any in stock or I don't know what, what it is. So anyways, um, these LED solar lights and these LED string lights, because I thought this would make a good sort of teardown. Um, very Big Clive style, but just not, you know, Big Clive quality tear down. There should be four of these. Looks like there is four. So here we go. So that's what they look like. They have a little solar cell on the top. They have a little LED. It looks like a service mount dealy. I don't know if you can, you can see in there. Yeah, the little LED in there. And have this on off. And I think... Yeah, yeah, there we go. You block the... I don't know if you can see. There we go. On, on, off. So just a tiny little bit of light. Pretty neat little waterproof button. So yeah, I think these things will make good teardowns. So I'm going to take a look at them and uh, tear them down. I think they're available in Canada and the US. Don't know about internationally. I'll have to take a look. And then uh, these guys here, these guys are a little bit like, well, they're a string light, but they're not the ones I asked for. I had asked for some of these, um, they look like mains voltage and they had like uh, two like LED filaments in them, but these are, they have like little, they're little fairy lights on the inside. Uh, looks like I have three extra. Is this plastic? I don't know if it's plastic. I think it's plastic. Okay, which is good. I have uh, fewer qualms about breaking them. Um, but yeah, I thought I was getting some mains lights, but these are, looks like they go on these little uh, transformers. This goes five volts, five watts, 100 milliamps. So, so these things won't be bright at all. Let me just see what they look like here when I plug it in. Hopefully it doesn't go bang. Yeah, so they're not super bright. Oh, look, this one doesn't work. No, it does work. Okay. Oh, it's kind of sketchy. That one's all sketchy. Some seem brighter than others, not gonna lie. Like, that one seems completely... It's like a duff one. Oh, there we go. Just had to finagle it a little bit. Anyways, there's a string, there's a whole bunch in here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six times six, what, 36? So 36 lights, actually not quite, because there's some missing here. So there's three missing here and three missing here. So 30 lights for the string. And yeah, again, I think this would be an interesting teardown. And I'm glad there's some extras in here, so then I can, um, you know, kind of smash them open and take a look. Kind of looks like they're pressed in so yeah I'll have to take a look so yeah not very much light um, I thought they were going to be sort of mains voltage but I guess not but yeah at the very least should be interesting to take a look at and finally the very last item of this mailbag also by way of Amazon um, this was $26 taxes in and that's pretty impressive considering what this is. This is a uh, keyboard, computer keyboard, but it is a mechanical keyboard. It has um, U-Temu blue switches. So those are the knockoffs of the uh, very prevalent Cherry MX blues. Uh, and so that makes this 
at $26, a pretty good value. Don't know why there's a random F3 key in here. This might not be a good thing. <laughs> Uh-oh. Um, so, yeah, my wife and I have these... Uh, Vixing is the company. Uh, we have these keyboards with red linear switches, uh, mechanical switches. We've had them for a couple of years now, but my wife is a professional Twitch streamer. You can go check out her Twitch stream at the link in the description. Um, so she puts more wear on her keyboard than mine, and her S key has started acting up. Those of you who play games know that W uh, A S D. Oh god, this is not good. Oh no! <laughs> It's in pieces. Ooh, that's a nice, nice noise. Uh, okay. So I don't know if this is a bad thing. So I'm gonna have to check if this all works, but I was hoping it wouldn't be in pieces. I'm gonna check for uh, dust and stuff between the keys because I don't want this to be used. If it got damaged in shipping, that's not the end of the world, but uh, if, it's, if it's used, that's not cool. There we go. So what I like about mechanical keyboards is a few things. So first of all, the switches are very um, responsive. Like it's not like these mushy domes that you get on a membrane keyboard. And the second thing is durability. I mean, I used to buy like not cheap, but not expensive either um, keyboards. And the membrane ones never lasted very long. It was always like, you know, they, they lasted no time at all. Um, so these things last a lot longer and some of them are replaceable. Now my wife's keyboard, they are replaceable in the sense that you can buy a new switch and re-solder it onto the board. It's not the kind that just lifts out. So in order for me to order a switch and have her keyboard out of commission, you know, she has to have, I, you know, I have to have the keyboard for a little while. And if something goes wrong, she can't work, right? She's a Twitch streamer. So I figured we'd get her replacement keyboard and I can maybe do the key replacement on her keyboard after that. So that's the thought here. But I'm looking, this doesn't seem used. So I think that's good. The switches, oh, look, there's scratches down here too. What's going on here? I don't know. But anyways, $26. These are the cheapest mechanical keyboards I have ever found. They're a bit flexy. They do have some good switches though. Let's see. I know I just had one out. Um, I feel like these are gonna be soldered in as well. Probably are. They don't look clipped in. Another thing I really like about mechanical keyboards, uh, I only buy the kind with um, uh, lighting coming through. So let me turn off the lights here and we'll check out the lighting on this thing. I hope it's not just unicorn puke. Usually you can, um, ad they're addressable so you can sort of set it up, but we'll see, I'll bring you back. Not sure if I have the settings right, but uh, here it goes. Let's see what happens when I plug it in. Can you guys see that? Okay, let me change this some more. Okay, so the light's pretty dim now. So there you go, you can see all the keys. Now, I think usually it's either function or this one, and then you can usually change the brightness and stuff. Did that get brighter? Maybe it's this one. Oh, that's not working. It's either function or, yeah, I guess not. I guess you are stuck with the um, with the unicorn poop or unicorn vomit, or maybe it needs to be plugged into a computer in order for that to work. But these are very clicky switches. I'm not sure if my wife will enjoy this. But anyways, um, the point of buying stuff from Amazon is that it's easy to return if it's no good at all. So far, I'm kind of liking the feel of this. Check the link in the description if you want to get your own. I would definitely recommend uh, even an inexpensive mechanical keyboard over a reasonably priced membrane keyboard. It's a big difference. And especially 
you know, when the keys are fairly stable, everything seems to work, but just, yeah, unfortunately the lights are not changeable, at least not when you're not plugged into a computer. And so that's it. Um, I don't actually have all the items around here because I'm just about to edit the video. And um, yeah, this uh, mailbag was filmed within the last, uh, you know, couple of days. And so I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to give a special thanks to um, my Patreon patrons because they are the people who allow me to buy a lot of stuff. Also, when you guys use the affiliate links in the description, that really helps me out. I get to buy more stuff with the affiliate money. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this mailbag. Thanks for watching.